Hello again, partners. Here we are at report number 73. My writer and researcher, Dennis Daly, has uncovered what is to be one of the least known stories of the American Revolution. I can tell you right now that the man we are honoring was Pedro Francisco, but the longer he lived in America, his name slowly changed to Peter Francisco. You see, partners, Francisco was not from the colonies. Like so many people who contributed to America's drive for freedom, Francisco was born on an island in the Atlantic that was a far-flung part of Portugal. <laughs> so, Jimmy, if he was born in Portugal, how did he end up in the middle of the American Revolution? Well, I'm glad you asked that. You see, like a lot of young boys during his time, Pedro Francisco was kidnapped. What? Yes, he was kidnapped and forced to work aboard a ship, this young boy. However, when he was 10 years old, now look, think about this, I said 10, that showed how young he was when he was kidnapped, had to be like seven or eight. Anyway, he managed to escape from a ship while it was anchored on the coast of Virginia. Police found him wandering around in the docks, starving. They took him to an orphanage. At the time, Pedro spoke no English, but history tells us this young boy was a quick learner. He became very good at English, and in just two years, by the time he was 12, he was adopted by a wealthy Virginia judge, Judge Anthony Winston. Judge Anthony Winston. Now, partners, Judge Winston had a young nephew he was very proud of, who was making quite a name for himself. So when Peter Francisco was adopted by that Virginian family, he automatically immediately became a cousin to Judge Winston's nephew, who was none other than Patrick Henry. Yes, the American who later in life said a famous line. I'm going to wait and let you see that later, hear it later. Okay, anyway, this was Judge Winston's nephew, Patrick Henry. Aha! Uh -huh. So it was Patrick Henry who became the lifelong friend of our honoree this week, Peter Francisco. No, no, wait a minute, I didn't say that. You're jumping ahead of me. That was a good guess, though, but there's more to the story, and we're about to get there right now. You see, there was something about Peter Francisco that I forgot to mention. By the time this guy was 16, he was 6 feet 7 inches tall and weighed about 280 pounds. Uh-huh, just a midget. <laughs> no, no, you see, the young immigrant from Portugal had grown into a giant of a boy well before he was even 21. Now, it took over a year for Peter to convince his adopted mother that he wanted to be a soldier and fight with George Washington. Yeah. Being underage, Peter needed the family's permission to join the army. Finally, permission was granted, and in 1777, young Peter Francisco went off to war. He fought bravely for a year, then he was nearly killed when a musket ball nearly tore off one of his legs. While he was being treated in a makeshift hospital, he met the important man I mentioned earlier. And the really amazing part of this story is the friendship that developed between this giant of a man and a man known for his gentleness and quiet manner was totally unexpected. Yeah, yeah, you might call, you, you might, well, let's say they look like a colonial odd couple. So, Jimmy, spell the beans. Who is this important leader Peter met in that hospital? Uh-oh, oh, I'm getting a signal. Hate to say this, partners, but I just ran out of time for this week. Don't do that. No, we did. We the answer to your question. We'll just have to wait. 
Jimmy, you mean you're going to stop here right when we get to the good part? Well, I hate to do this, but it just adds to the excitement. So partners, next week will be part two of this great story I call a revolutionary friendship. Okay, partners, you know the drill. Look up there, those three boxes with the X's in them. Well, not just one has the X, and that's the one, number three over the right. Yes, click that one, and whoosh, you'll go right back to our report page for the rest of this week's comments. Now, remember, this is just part one, and part two is going to be twice as exciting. My writer and researcher, Dennis Daly, has the secret, knowing just where to return in time and bring the perfect stories for me to video and report to you each week. My special thanks again to all of you partners who've been so helpful with your tax-free contributions to our little foundation listed below. Yeah, there are a lot of tax-free foundations, but they don't work like ours do. When you write that check, it is tax-free and so helpful in many ways. Bless your hearts. Be sure and call the teachers and principals of the schools in your area and ask them to contact me about coming to their history and civic classes, telling my versions of special stories about America, which they no longer teach today. I love getting hugs from the students. We always hold hands in a circle, closing our sessions with a prayer for each one. Yes, prayer for one another and our leaders in Washington. Bless your hearts. God bless you. And God bless America. I really enjoy telling these stories on video. You know I love you. Go get them, tigers!